Hi. So what I'd like to do today is give you an introduction to the PEP8 simulator that we're going to use for running machine language code as well as assembly language code. So the first thing we have to do is find the program. In theory, if you follow the directions in the uh, handout that I gave you, it's hopefully in a folder on your desktop called PEP813WIN. So I'm going to go into that folder, and you're going to select the PEP8.exe icon. All right? It's going to ask you to run it, you're going to run it. So when it first opens up, it's going to be in this basically two panel view, source code and then the architecture here showing the registers. And you want it to be in a three panel view. So go up here in the middle and left click on this three panel view. And so now you have a source code, object code, assembly listing region. You have an architecture region showing the, the different registers, the accumulator, the program counter, instruction register composed of the instruction specifier and operand specifier, and then your memory dump over here on the right. And just as a note in the future, um, whenever a program calls for input, uh, make sure you have the batch I.O. tab clicked, so that's in the forefront, and you'll just enter your values here, you know, 40, for whatever values the program is looking for, okay? You don't put any commas or anything like that, so that's the batch I.O. area. All right. Well, the first thing you always want to get in the habit of doing is going up under System, left-clicking on System, and left-clicking on Clear Memory. And what that does is it clears out your memory. Remember that all the programs are run from memory, and so the instructions are fetched from memory and then executed. So by clearing out memory, you're making sure that you don't have anything residual from previous runs, and so it just kind of is a nice restart. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to, I've cleared memory, system, clear memory. So now I'm going to go down here in the object code window, and I'm going to type in the object code, the machine language program, from the box on page 163 of your book. And so I'm going to type that in, and then, um, so it starts out 5000, zero, 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 and I'm going to continue to type that in, and so I'll be right back after I type it in. Okay, now you can see that I've typed in the program from that box on page 163, excuse me, and notice that I put a ZZ at the end. That ZZ doesn't have anything to do with the mach machine language itself. That's simply two symbols that are used by this simulator to know where the end of the object code is. And so it's just for use by this particular simulator. So now I'm going to go up under Build, left click on Build, and I like to run these in debugging mode, so I'm going to go to Load first, I'm going to left click on Load, and that's going to load this object code into memory. And now notice if we read across and from 0 to 7 to 8 using these addresses. This address is the address in hex of the first byte in the row. You'll notice that our program that's here has simply been copied into memory here. And it wraps around through there. All right, so everything here is directly from here. And so we've copied our object code into memory. So now what we want to do is do the fetch execute cycle that we learned about as far as how a computer actually works and so that's all that's going to happen now is that the program the simulator is going to do the fetch decode execute cycle so now as I mentioned before I like to run these in debugging mode so I'm going to go build start debugging object since this is object code machine code and you'll notice now what's happened is the central region here is populated with some values and we have a, a button here single step that we can start to click notice that the program counter here has hex value of 0, decimal value of 0, and it's pointing at the first three bytes in memory. So the th those three bytes are in blue, and they represent the instruction that will next be fetched and executed. So the program counter is pointing at the next instruction <coughs> excuse me, to be fetched and executed. So I'm going to click on single step, and so that first instruction has been fetched and is now sitting in the instruction specifier and the operand specifier. You'll notice that over here, the operand, the instruction specifier is the first byte, so 5-0. Notice that when we look at the instruction specifier here, it's showing it in binary. But you'll notice that 0101-0000 is simply 5-0 in hex. What's nice about this simulator is that on to the right of this, on the to the right of the instruction specifier, it's showing the assembly language version of that instruction specifier. So character output, caro, comma i means to output the ASCII character associated with the value 
that's in the operand specifier. This is a media mode, I. So the ASCII character associated with hex value 48, if we look down here in the output panel, is H, right? So all this did was fetch that first instruction, decode it, execute it. So the execution was the character output an ASCII character to the user using immediate mode. So the hex value, the ASCII value associated with the hex value of 48 is H. All right. Notice now that the program counter is pointing at location 3, hex 3, decimal 3. And you'll notice there that the next three bytes are in blue. So that's the next instruction that's going to be fetched and executed. So we single step. And you'll notice that now the program counter is incremented to 6, pointing at the next instruction to be fetched and executed. The instruction that we just fetched is sitting now in the instruction specifier, in the operand specifier. You'll notice that this operand specifier 65 agrees exactly to the operand specifier here of 0065, 0065. And again, we have our cheat, which is showing us that this is character output, immediate mode, immediate addressing. And so now it's putting out the ASCII character associated with hex value of 65, which is an E. And we can continue to step through this program, H-E-L, H-E-L-L, H-E-L-O. And so notice now that each time the program counter incremented by three. And now it's pointing at location, um, what's that, 15, F-F-F, okay, F. And so now it's one more step on the single step, and it pulls in that 00, zero instruction, which we know to be stop. And notice it went from 15 to 16. And why is that? Because it fetched a one byte instruction. Stop instructions are one bytes, one byte instructions. They're unary. They have no operand specifier associated with them. And just pointing out how the program counter is incremented. All right, so the program outputted the word hello. And so, uh, and it's finished, it stopped. You'll notice that we no longer have the single step button here that we can click on. And so um, that's showing how a machine language program is entered into the simulator, loaded, and then executed using debugging mode. And I would just uh, stress that it's probably the easiest way to do this. It avoids some of the particular quirks that this particular program has. Now, once you've actually gotten a program to work, or you're in the process of trying to work on one, you're probably going to want to save it so that you can load it later. And the way to do that is just go up under File, Go save, in this case, object. We want to save the object because this is object code. All right. And then find the file that you want to save it to. I'm going to just go to the desktop. And I'm going to save it on the desktop. And you could save it into a particular folder if you want. I'm just going to call this test. Test.pepo. Leave the extension alone. Click save. And so now I have saved this object code right here into a file that I can now submit as part of my assignment to Sakai, or I can reload it later on by going up under File, Open, go to my desktop, find the file down here somewhere, hopefully. There it is. Left click on that, left click on Open, and it reloads it. All right. So that's giving you an example of how to enter object code into the program, machine language, load it, and execute it, and then save it.